45 minutes ago. Log one, Kansas City, Missouri. I live in Kansas City, Missouri. My house is just north of the Missouri River, and every night I look out my window and marvel at the light show that dances across the waves from the skyscrapers. I was always impressed at how marvelous my city was, from the friendly people to the blazing, glorious lights protected from Tarim Tower, which was completed in 2024 and still somehow stands as my beloved city falls to pieces around me. The end of the world started sometime at around 10pm on the day my friends and I decided to have a special reunion. One of my friends, Alex, worked at a small, fancy restaurant that floated on the river as assistant manager. He was able to use his power to get us a large table on the third floor, overlooking the shores and marinas on both sides of the river. We were situated in just the spot that we could see for miles and miles down each end of the river, which is probably the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. At 10pm that night, a riot started just south of the city. Not a big deal, I thought. Jesus, I, I couldn't have been more wrong. And we started to get worried at around 10.15 or so when the stars and moon started dimming as if a fog had swiftly covered the sky. We had no idea what this was at first, since the weather forecast had predicted clear skies for the next few days. Then, then the smell hit us. It was a complete assault on my senses. The smell of burning rubber, gasoline, and what I now think was probably burning flesh. But the worst part were the sounds that followed a few seconds later. The sound of chaos filled the air, screaming, explosions, gunfire. If I didn't know any better, I would have thought I was in a war zone. And in a sense, I was right. Once I was able to regain my senses, I looked at the shore to see the shadows of people that must have been soldiers, hastily sprinting to their positions behind tanks. Honest to God, tanks. Just sitting there on the shoreline, firing into the streets. This was when I noticed that the streets were ablaze. Cars on fire. The bottom floor of skyscrapers crumbling. Dead bodies everywhere. I also noticed that the panic was spreading up the skyscrapers. Floor by floor, there were shattering windows, fires and explosions popping up like some twisted version of whack-a-mole. We also noticed for the first time what was causing the panic. In the streets, people were attacking each other, mauling everyone in sight, not even caring if they were armed or not. By then, it was 10.33. Jets streamed overhead, missiles connected with the bridges going over the river, severing the city in two. The military had withdrawn from the city, with their tanks set ablaze and their personnel nowhere to be seen. Right now, it's 1045. Both sides of the river are in chaos. The waters are burning. There are bodies everywhere. So many bodies. I really don't know what to do at this point. A city of 500,000 people just got decimated by something in less than an hour. That means there are 500,000 of those things out there, traveling along the highways to St. Louis, Des Moines, Topeka, and so many other cities. I... I don't know what's happening, but all I know is that this... this is the end of the world. I just hope that we aren't the only ones left once this ends. Log number two. Atlanta, Georgia. Hello. This is my personal log of the recent events in Kansas City. I am Dr. Freddy Sermondo, Director of Bioweapons Containment at the CDC lab in Atlanta, Georgia. Seven hours ago, Kansas City, Missouri was wiped off the map by an unknown pathogen that spreads like wildfire through dense populations, causing mass hysteria and isolated cases of cannibalism and suicidal actions. That's really all we know. 
well, we know that. And we know that it spreads really fucking fast. I mean, basically all of Iowa, Missouri, and Kansas are gone. We estimate around 6 million to be infected, and panic has taken hold of the nation. Riots have started all along the coasts, and a plane full of the infected showed up in Toronto 15 minutes ago. We lost contact just before I started this voice log. I'm not even sure if it's possible to treat it in any way, since I'm hearing of symptoms showing mere minutes after exposure, or as soon as the pathogen reaches the brain. I mean, Jesus Christ, we don't even have samples yet. The 48 teams we've sent in have either vanished, crashed, or simply aren't to their destinations yet. I don't know how we're going to stop this thing, or if it can even be stopped. Fuck. We're so screwed. <sighs> the only way to save the lives of the remaining 374 million people in the United States is a mass evacuation to Asia and Europe by boat, while it's still possible. I don't have any idea how in the hell we will ever evacuate enough people for it to matter. Hell, we'll probably just end up spreading it to the rest of the world and dooming the rest of humanity. It's worth a try though. Isn't it? This is Dr. Freddy Sermondo signing off. If this log is ever found by an individual that I never willingly gave it to, then assume I'm dead in a ditch or in some godforsaken government bunker. Log number three. Holy freaking shit. You know, I never expected that the world would end like this, but here I am. Sitting in the World One Trade Center, watching the world end before my eyes. The government started evacuating the city about five hours ago. And since then, all hell has broken loose. New York City is officially gone. So, everyone calls the infected screamers. I had no idea why until an hour ago. They freaking scream, man. Non-stop, rarely pausing for breath, screaming until their final moments. I'm getting ahead of myself. My name is Lola Morris. I'm 23 years old and I'm about to frickin' die out here. There's a bite on my ankle. Yeah, they're frickin' zombies. At least that would explain why they're so damn hard to kill. Around 15, maybe 16 hours ago, Every news channel in the U.S. was flooded with the news of the first darkening. That's what everyone's calling the apocalypse. I can't tell you how frightened I was, looking at the burning skyline of Kansas City, wondering what could send a city into a sick chaos in mere minutes. Well, now I know. When they started packing us on ships for Europe, I had no idea what to do or where to go. All I knew was that those ships were certain death traps. If even one infected person got on those ships before they left, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think or feel, especially not my leg. Criminy, my leg hurts. I don't know how long I'm going to be alive for, since the pain is spreading faster. I think... I think I'll jump. I won't turn into the things that destroyed my city, my life, my sanity. If you find this log, good for you. You're either the best survivalist in human existence, or you're just astonishingly lucky. Either way, hats off to you for surviving in a city full of 19 million ravenous killing machines. I can hear the voices. I can't feel the pain anymore. I'm going to jump. I have to. Log 4, Hudson Bay. It always has to start in America, doesn't it? Every movie about a plague, alien invasion, everything. It always starts and ends with America. 
Well, it sure as hell won't be ending anytime soon, and it certainly won't be America that finishes off the darkening. Why? Well, America has fallen, and America isn't the last to fall either. I live in a small town on the southern shores of Hudson Bay. I won't tell you my name, I won't tell you what the town's name is, because it doesn't matter. We're gone now. It started around two days ago, with news reports flooding in of a city in the Midwest falling into chaos. When we realized that they were pretty much zombies, it was too late to help. It was too late to run. It was too late to hide. At around the seven hour mark, the Canadian border that was bordering Minnesota was overrun by countless screamers. We never stood a chance. Soon, screamers from New York were flowing into Toronto and Quebec and Central America was deemed lost. An hour ago, screamers arrived in my town. We were able to fight back for a while, build barricades, and using whatever guns we could, we were able to hold them off. But the shots only attracted more screamers. And we were overrun 15 minutes ago. As I record this, I can hear them prowling outside the cabin. I'm pretty sure I saw a few of them take down a bear a few minutes ago. I have a gun on hand, some bullets, and a way out of this hellhole. I think I'll take my chances running to the car and driving north, where I might be able to catch a boat to Greenland and then Europe. If you're listening to this, pray to whatever sick god rules over us that I made it there alive. No data remaining. Power and down. Hello everyone, this is Magnetar. I wanted to extend my utmost gratitude for Madame Raven and As the Raven Dreams for joining me in this collaboration. I've listened to both of them for a very long time, and to be able to record and narrate beside them is absolutely incredible. Thank you everybody for your support. Thank you, my collaborators. And if you'd like to hear more stories like this, please join us in the void. But remember, astrophobes be warned.